Do you like zombies? Well, these are our top 10 most viewed Zombie Go Boom episodes of all time. Check it out. ZGB Top 10. Number 10. When the zombie apocalypse arrives, will you survive? Zombie Go Boom. Kick undead ass. Hey, what's up survivors? Welcome to another mind-blowing episode from Zombie Go Boom. This is a special episode we are calling Zombie Knockout. The only show that teaches you whether or not you can kill a zombie with your body as a weapon. We have two amazing challengers for you today, both of them professional fighters. Let's see who they are. In the left corner is Joe Jaeger Bombs Jaeger. He is a professional mixed martial artist currently ranked at 77th in the entire world in the light heavyweight division. He was formerly a super heavyweight champion for Rage in the Cage, and currently, he's the heavyweight champion for XFN XFL. If anyone can stand the chance to kill a zombie with one punch, it's definitely this guy. In the right corner is the one and only Randy Boom Boom Blake, a kickboxing superstar with a record of 30 wins and only 3 losses. He is also the ISKA heavyweight Muay Thai champion of the entire world. A kick from this guy will send you to the hospital, or worse. Let's see if it can crack a skull. Joe and Randy versus the patent pending Zombie Go Boom Ivan Head. It's the most scientifically accurate zombie head analog in the world. If they can get through this, they can get through the real thing. All right, now let's move on to round number one, where we will have Joe Jaeger Bombs Jaeger see if he can drop bombs and kill Ivan with one punch. In three. Two, one. Joe hit with a speed of 60 feet per second, which is equivalent to 40.91 miles per hour. He managed to hit with a force of 1,000 pounds, which some people say is equivalent to a sledgehammer to the face. Too bad Joe's fists aren't made of metal. His eyes closed. <laughs> Well, unfortunately, Joe Yeager does not have what it takes to make a zombie go boom with one punch. But let's see if our second contender, Randy Boom Boom Blake, can make a zombie go boom boom with his legs legs. Three, two, one. The speed of Randy's kick was 90 feet per second, which is equivalent to 61.36 miles per hour. The force behind that kick was a whopping 1,500 pounds. That's one and a half times more than Joe's punch. All right, now let's move on to round number two. Since that crap didn't work, we're gonna try to tag team Ivan by having both of our fighters stand on either side and punch Ivan. And then if that doesn't work, we're gonna have them elbow Ivan. Three, two, one. Nope. Let's try some elbows. Three, two, one. Not as easy as it looks, huh, keyboard doctors? Double nope. All right, let's move on to round number three. Let's see if Joe Jaeger bombs Jaeger has what it takes to kill a zombie with a baseball bat. Three, two, one. Did it. <laughs> 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 
Oh my god. You gonna clean that up, aren't you, Yeah. Ooh, yeah. Alright, that's all I have with this mind-blowing episode of Zombie KO. If you're a professional fighter and you think you have what it takes to kill a zombie, hit me up on the links right here. Other than that, please favorite, share, tell your friends, and punch the living shit and f out of the like button because that really helps. I'm Chuck Murray and we will see you next time. Wow, that's from punching the Ivan head? That's from punching the Ivan head. Look. You don't, you don't generally see people punching people to death in UFC matches, obviously. Uh, it's really hard. Number nine. <laughs> <laughs> Sight save death. When the zombie apocalypse arrives, will you survive? Using real life settings, we put the weapons, everyday objects, and theories to the test. Zombie go boom. Kill undead ass. What's up, survivors? Welcome to another mind blowing episode of Zombie Go Boom. Today is our third annual Halloween Spooktacular. And we're very excited to be bringing you the scythe test. A lot of you guys have been asking us to test the scythe. Well, we will today. Sadly though, we can't seem to find Charles the Executioner faults anywhere. I think he's dead. What do you mean he's dead? He's dead. People he's die. Not. He's the Executioner. He can't die. Oh. Oh, well. It looks like we have a guest Executioner today. Um, Grim. Death, how would you like to be? Why don't we go to the tail of the tape? Yeah, let me tell you all about that. Okay. The scythe, Cronus's pimp cane. This farming tool is the most metal thing in the barn. It was originally used to hack away grass. Standing a little over five feet with the blade length of two, this demonic tool from the underworld is also the iconic weapon wielded by one of the four horsemen of the apocalypse, the Grim Re. Can I make a zombie go boom? Let's find out. Oh my god. Wait, 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 wait. No, don't worry about it. I didn't like her much anyway. You don't have to go. In fact, high five, man. Good job. Oh, too slow. Oh. Let's, uh, let's go to the compound and test that thing out. Dead. Then Death actually used the scythe to cut the neck, and it was pretty much three-quarter decapitation. But uh, it, it looked really, really gnarly, and uh, probably could have decapitated the whole thing. If you're a human, you're dead. Since this is a zombie, not quite dead, just on the ground, not being able to move, biting at stuff. So let's double tap it and really, really kill it. Are you ready for this, Death?
for watching. I'm Death, the Harvester of Souls, killing people since, well, forever. Be sure to subscribe to my channel. I'll see you around. Hey, camera boy, you have something on your shirt? Let me get that for you. <laughs> Number eight. What's up, survivors? Welcome to the bloodiest show on YouTube. That's right, we are Zombie Go Boom, and we have a mind blowing episode for you today. Just a little sledge saw action in honor of Dead Rising 3 coming out November 22nd. The weapon featured in this episode is hands down the craziest modded weapon we've ever tested on the show. And to further illustrate that, we invited the Gaming Lemon to narrate our tale of the tape. The Sledge Saw. A cross between a sledgehammer and cement saw, the cleverly named Sledge Saw combines the brute force and blunt trauma with razor sharp stopping power. The handle of the hammer also extends the weapon's reach, so you'll be able to keep zombies at arm's length. This 50 pounds of carnage is wielded by the executioner for maximum destruction, and our targets are two ZGB Ivan heads ready for some punishment. Zombie go boom, dead rising style. this amazing weapon too without getting tired by buying Dead Rising 3. Now they are kills obviously uh, it cut right through the skull it's extremely clean, extremely clean. clean and smooth cut and uh, obviously that's it's meant to cut so so uh, getting through these skulls wasn't that big of a deal for a saw that's meant to cut through cement um, but it did take a while to get started so you're getting attacked at this point you might not even be able to get a cut in because it did take a while now a decapitation on the other hand didn't take that long at all so you probably decapitate the zombie and then use the sledgehammer to put them out of their misery alright now we're gonna tell you how we put it together so if we take and cut right here all this duct tape off you will see wire this is construction wire. I believe this is 16 gauge construction wire. 
and I've just basically wrapped it around and twisted it a whole bunch of times around this uh, handle right here and you can see right here uh, where the loose spots where I've taken uh, pliers and sort of bent the wire like that and that and that takes up any uh, slack that you might have which is a little more slack that's because we were using it and then down here <coughs> I've created a bracket <coughs> I took some let me cut this created a bracket out of little shelving pieces and bolts and I've actually bolted the brackets to the wooden handle and around this uh, handle here attached to the saw yeah and, the big, uh, just bolted it all together yeah the big problem with this is like we're borrowing this saw we don't actually own it so we can't actually you know change the integrity of the saw but we own the hammers yeah so nothing is actually attached permanently to the saw there's no holes drilled no bolts into the saw itself or anything like that it's all this wire on the exterior of the saw and these brackets going around this handle attached to the hammer itself and that's basically how we made it please check out that rising three it looks like an amazing game i know we're going to and that's all i have with this episode of zombie go boom i'm chuck murray and i'm charles Foltz. and then till next time Number seven. All right, my name is Freddy. I just moved into the neighborhood. Uh, I'm supposed to tell everyone about it. Oh, all right, well, nice to meet. Say, nice glove. What's up, Boom Heads? It's me, Chuck Murray, and this is another mind-blowing episode of Zombie Go Boom. That's right, it's our Halloween nightmare. And I'm joined with our friend, Freddy. The glove here is sent by our friend, Mauricio Garcia, so we're gonna be testing it out. Jim can't be here today. He's on his way to California to set up our second location, but in the meantime, don't touch the glove. Let's look at the tail of the tape. My glove features four six-inch heat-treated surgical steel blades coated with rust, sharp enough to get the job done, but dull enough to make it painful. But will it make a zombie go boom? All right, first up, the stab to the back of the head. All right, let's see what we got here. Can you stick it out? That's what she said. A little stuck? That's what she said. That didn't even go an inch into the skull. That is a fail. That is an what absolute. What are you talking about? Uh, it's pretty good. Let's uh, let's try the, let's try a slash, huh? All right, the four bladed slash to the front of the face. Well, if you are a human being, this will hurt like hell. Not only that, but you're gonna have a really cool, like, bad guy scar for the rest of your life. But even if you're a human being, this is not a kill shot. If you're a zombie, this is definitely not a kill shot. In fact, the zombie didn't care at all. So, I, I'm sorry, man, but this thing is just not working. What if we just stab him in the eyes? That's a really good idea. Let's do it. Three. I'm about an inch in. If you're a human being, you are blind. If you're a zombie, nothing happened. I'm sorry, neighbor. This is ZGB disapproved. I'll show you disapproved. No.
<laughs> Number six. What's crack a -lacking, yo? Are you ready to kick some undead ass? I present to you the sharpest sword we've ever tested on Zombie Go Boom. The Compensator. Zombie Go Boom starts right now. When the zombie apocalypse arrives, will you survive? Zombie Go Boom. Kick undead ass. Well, Compensator 1, our foam target from Zombie Industries, zero. But what we want to do is see what it'll do to our Ivan heads. But before we do that, let's take a look at the tail of the tape. The Compensator by Artificum Solace, the sharpest sword we have ever tested on Zombie Go Boom. This 34-inch bad daddy is made from 15 and 20 tool steel, plus it only weighs 1.4 pounds. This sword totally has what it takes to make a zombie go boom. Let's kick undead ass. Well, enough talking. Let's see if the Compensator can split Ivan right down the middle. Are you ready? I'm always ready. Three, two, one. Number five. Chill out, Sub Zero. No need to go all ninja guiding on his ass. I got this. Nice blade. Where'd you get it? I got mine in the mall. The Katana, the most famous Japanese battle sword seen in numerous movies and games. Celebrated for centuries, not just for its elegant beauty, but for its lethal cutting power. 30 inches of folded steel sharper than any razor with a diamond hard edge. Utilizing a quick draw to bring down its enemies with lightning speed. Can it make a zombie go boom? Hey guys, Jim Goza here for another special hardcore weapon series of Zombie Go Boom. I'm here with my friend Charles Fultz. This is your blade, correct? Correct. This is a store-bought blade. So, why don't you tell me a little bit about your blade? My sword is folded Damascus steel. Cool, and this other blade is just punched out crappy Chinese sheet steel, right? And that's being nice. Wait, what, what are your predictions for this test? For the store-bought sword, I predict that it's gonna break right here at this weld, or right there at that weld. And what's your prediction on your blade? Uh, it's gonna go through whatever you put in front of it. <laughs> Fantastic, all right, let's give it a shot. All right. Excellent, okay, looks like we got the high speed roll in. Okay, Charles, this is how this is gonna work, man. Four bottles of blood, battle ready katana. Are you ready? Ready. All right, three, two, one, hit it. Wow. Okay, so clearly if you have four zombies just standing in a row and you want them decapitated, this'll take care of it. Oh my God, look at the cut. Look. Can you can you feel that, Charles? It's very clean. It's very extremely clean, clean. And then here's the here's the last one, right there. Also an extremely clean clean cut. Good job, man. Yeah. Let's see what that crappy sword will do. You know, I think the mall katana might cut into the first bottle, but yeah. I don't see it going through all of them. No, like the definitely, not. definitely not. Definitely not. Well, right let's away. check it out. Let's check it out. All right, Charles. Same scenario. We got four bottles of blood. We got the store bought katana. Ready? Ready. All right. Three, two. One, go! Ooh. 
the swing. Oh, it didn't do anything. That is pathetic. <laughs> they look funny jiggling. Okay, let's see what happened. Absolutely nothing to the bottles. And the blade, I mean, can we do any more tests with this? No, we'll, no. We'll have to fix it because, let's see what happens. I'm gonna take it apart. Did I? See, the nut's already loose. It bent at the weld. Right there during the, 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 the strike. So I mean we can we can try to fix it and then and then try to do the rest of the test, but each time we do a test it's gonna be more and more dangerous. But the blade itself it's not just the, the tang, this this bolt thing that's messed up, it's the blade itself warped. I mean beyond beyond any kind of repair. This is just ridiculous. If you go to the mall to buy a sword to kill zombies, you are going to die. Well, as you can see, the store-bought katana is all bent and mangled, so we're not going to continue using it for safety purposes. However, we are going to continue using Charles' katana, and uh, our good friends at Zombie Industries sent us Ozamba Bin Laden here, as well as another target we'll soon be using. Charles, are you ready, buddy? Here we go! Three, two, one, go! Oh, that's wonderful. Oh. 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 That's the most gruesome thing wow. I've ever seen. <laughs> Charles, man, take out some stress on our new and improved Z heads. <laughs> well, I mean, I, I don't even need to say anything. Does the katana work? You bet your ass it does. Charles, oh my god, man. Good swing, brother. Look at this. Look at you, you completely, I mean, that is that is a clean cut, too. And man, watching that blood fly was just amazing. Uh, don't you know anything? You have to destroy the brain or sever the head. No. <laughs> Wait! You have to finish me! Finish him! As you can see, the professionally forged katana is an unbelievably powerful, balanced, precise, and sharp weapon. And if you've got one of these battle-ready katanas, and you've got the talent to use it, you've got the ZGB seal of approval. However, if you've got one of those store-bought jokes, you're dead meat. That does it for this episode of Zombie Go Boom. I'm Jim Goza. Happy hunting. Number four. All right, you guys asked for a taller zombie, and we made a taller zombie. This thing is now average height for a human, and the rig that it is connected to is spring-loaded to get realistic sway whenever this thing is bashed in the skull and face. Now, we've decided to call it the Boom Tower, suggested to us by these two gentlemen, and we're about to give it its maiden voyage. Using real-life settings, we put the weapons, everyday objects, and theories to the test, empowering you with the skills and knowledge you need to survive. Be a hero. Zombie go boom. Kick undead ass. What's up guys, Jim here with Zombie Go Boom. Now last episode you saw us use uh, K-Bar's Kukri Machete. Well today, Cold Steel sent us this big bad daddy. This is their heavy machete. It's made of 1055 carbon steel, it's 14 inches long, and it is the heaviest machete they make. So, let's get crack-a-lackin'.
All right, my first strike is gonna be straight down the middle. Ooh. I'd call that a dead blow, what do you think? Peel this bad daddy open. Yeah, that thing is, that thing's all the way in and this is not a shallow <coughs> blade. Look at that. All of that length, that's about four inches. Straight in, stuck. All right, let's take a look at the slow-mo footage. Coming in, bam! <laughs> it's sawed completely inside the it, it's it's absolutely completely embedded except for that front piece hanging out but the entirety of the blade width is all the way inside that thing's skull it is dead well that was pretty devastating uh, now I want to try right across the face Well, <laughs> I mean, uh, so that's pretty effective, right? Boom. Oh, yes, yes, yes. The skin is all peeled back. Uh, half of the head is just missing. It's on the ground right behind the zombie. That is certainly a kill as well. All right, I guess the only thing left is a decapitation. Well, I definitely cut in. I mean, evidently. <laughs> but uh, that wasn't a full-on decapitation. You know what? I think I want another swing. That, my friends, is one dead zombie. Let's check out the high-speed footage. Yes! Oh, that is just an explosion of gore, and uh, that thing is clearly, clearly toast. If the first frontal decapitation attempt didn't work, that definitely did. That is a dead zombie three times over. Well, I'd say that this is a monumentally effective weapon. We didn't even sharpen it that much, and I think uh, the reason why it was able to cut through so well is because not only did it come with a really well-fashioned blade, but also it had so much of this force to just back it up for every swing rendering this dude completely dead. Uh, <laughs> so uh, I would say that the Cold Steel Heavy Machete definitely gets Zombie Go Boom's seal of approval. Well, that does it for this episode of Zombie Go Boom. I'm your host, Jim Goza. Thank you for joining me, and happy hunting. Number three. Hey, what's up, survivors? Welcome to another mind-blowing extra episode from Zombie Go Boom. Today, we're going to be putting a long, long argument to rest. Can an airsoft gun kill a zombie. Well, we have some standard airsoft guns here. This one is spring-powered. This one's electric. These two are gas. This one's probably the most powerful one. Now, we will be testing out some even more powerful air guns, some of them used for hunting, but uh, for now, we're gonna see if just the standard kind of stuff works. These were sent to us by Crossman. This is the Undead Apocalypse uh, edition of these guns. And the round we will be using is a six millimeter, 20 grain airsoft BB. Let's see what they do to our Ivan head. Let's start with the spring powered shot. <laughs> All right, so what we got is a couple of scuffs here on the head. This one actually went a little bit into the skin, not very much though. That would hurt like hell if you were a human. So if you ever go and uh, do some airsoft stuff, make sure you wear protection masks, you know, all of that stuff, because these aren't toys. But at the same time, uh, so far we are unsuccessful in even getting 
remotely close to killing a zombie. Let's try the electric airsoft gun and see what that does. Hey guys, I'm going to be using the electric gun because everybody knows women love electric toys on full auto. Well, they all bounced off except for this one. It's kind of stuck in the zombie blood and it's coming down slowly but surely. And come on, we're done. Nope. Let's try the gas powered ones. There you go, Hunter S. Thompson style. Most of them bounced off. Some of them did get embedded. I actually got hit by the ricochet of one of them. You can't kill a zombie with an airsoft gun. Airsoft guns are not meant to even kill people. Killing zombies is a little bit harder than killing a person because you got to destroy the brain. So that's it guys. No more asking for airsoft guns. They obviously don't work. They're not meant to do the amount of damage that you need to kill a zombie. Number two. Zombie Go Boom here at the Cold Steel headquarters. Lynn Thompson had this table of special weapons set up specifically for us. Zombie Go Boom starts now. Using real life settings, we put the weapons, everyday objects, and theories to the test, empowering you with the skills and knowledge you need to survive. Be a hero. Zombie Go Boom. Kick undead ass. What's up guys, Jim Goza here with Zombie Go Boom in Ventura, California at the Cold Steel home base. And I'm here with the Mac Daddy of weaponry, Mr. Lynn Thompson. How's it going, Lynn? Good. Just well, got done training this morning, so I'm warmed up and ready to go. Spectacular, got those muscles loose and ready to swing, and we will be making some heads go boom very shortly. So, let's take a look at the tail of the tape. The Mac Daddy, I've been waiting to see this thing. Lynn, tell me all about it. This is a great sword, and one of my favorite weapons, as you can see from my videos and stuff. And this weighs about six pounds. It's got big cooling guards here and shorter guard here to protect your forward hand. Um, it's got a really generous grip, and you can, this was often used to stab with sure. as much as it was to cut with. But, um, this also got good balance. It doesn't take much of a stroke to cut through a mailing tube. Six pounds. Six pounds. That's it. And I barely touched it. <laughs> oh, so, man. That thing is so brutal. It's so pretty. The sail that through a zombie. That took nothing. You go up here like this, and it come down like that, and I put an 8-inch hole in them. All right, we've seen what this thing can do to a 200 pound rated mailing tube. Now, uh, what do you say we see what it can do to a zombie head? All right, guys, Jim Goza here with Lynn Thompson, who's about to use the great sword on one of our brand new, amazingly fashioned Zed heads from Chris Mills at Silver Samrock Lab. You ready? Yep. Let's do it, Lynn. Yes! Skull right here, just sunk right in all the way. That cut straight through to the chin almost. That is right along the jawline. That is a kill. That is an instant, instant kill. All right, let's take a look at the slow-mo footage. You saw what this thing can do in a vertical strike. Now, Mr. Lynn Thompson here is going to try a decapitation. You ready, Lynn? Yep. I cannot wait to see this. Oh. 
<laughs> that is so clean. Just look at this. That is so clean. I I I I don't I don't I don't I'm I don't I don't I don't know. You're speechless. I don't know what to say. I really am. Everyone I really is speechless am. in the in the presence of a great sword. If you know how to use a great sword, it's easy. All I did is I twisted at my waist okay. here, and I stepped. And this is just a standard uh, horizontal katana cut. You step in and you twist at your waist and you keep the sword level and the sword does the work. So you got you, a great sword? It's easy. Indeed. We gotta check out that slow-mo footage right now. Well, that does it for this special Cold Steel style version of Zombie Go Boom. Mr. Lynn Thompson, thank you so much. You're welcome. And uh, we would actually like to incorporate you as an official Zombie Go Boom zombie slayer uh, so that hopefully when the apocalypse strikes, we can drive out here and meet up with you and, <laughs> and work as a team as opposed right. to against each other because I would not want to face off against you, my friend. Well, that does it for this episode of Zombie Go Boom. Uh, I'm Jim Goza. This is Lynn Thompson. Happy hunting. Number one. Hey, have you ever wondered if an Xbox 360 can kill a zombie? Zombie Go Boom starts right now. When the zombie apocalypse arrives, will you survive? Zombie Go Boom. Kick undead ass. What is up, survivors? I'm Chuck Murray. Welcome to another mind-blowing episode of Zombie Go Boom. That's right, I actually mean it today. We have Boogie 2988 Francis, a man best known for destroying Xboxes. So, what is he going to be using as our ZGB Ivan heads? Let's take a look at the tail of the tape. The Xbox 360, it's your favorite possession. You've used it to kill thousands of your friends and foes, but can the six pounds of aluminum and plastic make a zombie go boogie? It's time for Francis to find out. Survivors, you asked for it, and we're here to deliver the Xbox 360. Can it kill a zombie? Well, I didn't feel right testing this out myself. We, we, we really need an expert. So we thought we'd call on the guy that is known for destroying some Xboxes, a real expert when it comes to this weapon, Francis, ladies and gentlemen. What's up, Chuck? Hey, nice to meet you. Nice to meet you, Francis. How are you? Who's this guy? Hey, this is uh, Ivan. This is the head you're going to be destroying today. Now we have some video of you destroying some Xboxes. Can you tell us what's, what was going on through your mind while you were doing this? Well, you know, I, I like to play Xbox, I like to play Call of Duty, but they kept calling me fat on the thing. And I don't know how they know that I'm fat because I, I, you can't see me, but they somehow knew I was fat. Whoa. So I just, I got mad and the stupid thing, I, I broke it with a guitar controller from Rock Band. Whoa. I'm sorry to hear that, man. Well, at least now you'll be able to take some of that aggression. You can you can pretend that this is one of those haters that you have. I gotta tell you, it's really nice being here uh, and not being the ugliest guy on camera for a change. <laughs> Plus, you know, the zombie's kind of ugly too, Chuck. <laughs> right in the fields. Let's start by hitting them with the flat parts of the face. A lot of people think that's the way to do it. We generally don't think that that works, but maybe we should start there. I, I, could, I could probably do that for you. But, you know, what's my motivation here? He seems like a pretty chill guy. He's, he's pretty cool, but the reason why he's upset is because he was one of the lead designers for SimCity. Good shit. Uh-uh. Whoa. Sons of bitches! <laughs> That did, feels pretty good. Did it? Yeah. What did we do? Well, not much. Let's try to hit it on the top of the head. Okay. All right. Three, two, one. 
two, one. Well, let's see what we got here. Not much. Rip the rip the skin a tiny bit, but uh, we're gonna need a few more hits to get through this skull. Oh, I'm gonna kill this son of a bitch. All right, let's go crazy. Yeah. 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 yeah! This is for not being able to log into the server. This is for every shim going to just a random house. This is for releasing an incomplete crappy game. completely broken so if you hit a zombie with an xbox enough times you will break its neck getting through the skull however that's a completely different story it's well, not good for anything oh. you can't even watch netflix on the stupid thing without paying $4.99 you can't even kill a zombie with it no, i know i know what is an xbox good for that's why i have a playstation 3 i'm a pc guy You're pc, PC? master yeah, race i like pc too yeah all right, well, nothing against the Xbox, pretty good system. But yeah, I mean, what, what, what's up with that? I mean, hey. And then also, not being able to kill a zombie. Of course, we don't know if a PlayStation 3 can do it. Uh, my guess is this is probably our best bet, but um, I've never seen Ivan so sad in my entire life. So hard, it's, it's ridiculous. Well, as you can see, a lot of the plates fell off of the Xbox. We managed to snap them back together. We're gonna use this later, though, because we really can't destroy the skull with the Xbox. If you have an Xbox, save it for games during the apocalypse, if you have electricity. If not, um, just don't use it to kill zombies, pretty much. But uh, we need to finish this off, Francis. Uh, he looks paralyzed, but that's just not gonna do it. You gotta, uh, you know, we double tap him with a gun or, yeah. you know, the, the last time I did, killed an Xbox, I used an axe. You guys, you guys have an, an axe? axe or anything? No, I don't have an axe, but I do have, <laughs> A cold steel trench hawk in my pocket. That'll do, pig. That'll do. Let's do this. Three, two, one. Ah. Son of a bitch. <sighs> well, broken neck with the Xbox, broken head with the trench hawk, but now we need to do something about that Xbox, Francis. You know, Chuck, I learned something today about myself. What's that? I'm just not ready for the zombie apocalypse. I, I'm not good at killing zombies, but there's a skill I do have. I am good at killing the Xboxes. <laughs>
still can. Good job, man. Thanks for being on the show. Thanks for having me, brother. I hate those things. ZGB Top 10.